This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Deep South Dining is the show all about the culture of Southern flavor. From fried chicken and collard greens to shrimp and grits and a glass of sweet tea. Subscribe now to the podcast using any podcast app or download our MPB Public Media app. Hello, thanks for tuning in to Everyday Tech. This is Abram Nanny here with Sabir abdul Haq, an IT expert. Recently on the show, I spoke with a guest about how Mississippi is underrepresented in the STEM world. But did you know that Mississippi actually ranks as the second best state to pursue a career in game development? Mm. Did you know the latest military supercomputer is located in Mississippi? So despite our general lack of careers in technology, Mississippi headlines tech news quite often. And today we're talking about those headlines. And of course, the server is open to troubleshoot your calls and questions as well. Email everydaytech at mpbonline.org if you have any questions or comments. And don't forget about the Talk to Us feature on the MPB Public Media app, where you can record a voice or video message and send it straight to us at Everyday Tech. Good morning, Sabir. How is it going, man? Good morning. Good morning. It has <laughs> been a very, I'd have to say, an empowering morning in terms empowering. of Empowering. Okay. Empowering. I, I love working with some of the folks at my main, at my main, uh, my main work. Uh, and and making sure that they're aware of certain things, and they'll be like, "Oh my God, this isn't working! Oh my God, that isn't mm-hmm. working!" Trying to get to a point where they feel comfortable and to be able to handle things themselves, not to the point that you know, hey, don't call me, <laughs> no, right, no, right. not to the point, don't call me, but to understand that there are quick and easy things that you can be able to do for everyday things that might give you a headache at work, and how you can be able to go ahead and handle it, handle it yourself, and it's. I've, a few people have told me it's empowering. I do everything from quick little screenshots and saying, this is how you do that, mm-hmm. this is how you do that, this is how you do that. And then every month, on the first week of every month, I do a quiz. Okay. And then so I'll quiz them, and we, I send it out across GroupMe with multiple choice. But this month was a little bit of a harder question. So okay. a couple people were like, you want me to do what? And then a few people said, oh, no, I got the answer. I got the answer. Here you go. Here you go. So oh, nice. it's, it's almost like a classroom, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. it's a good feel. I think I was saying before in previous shows, and I'll tell anybody, I love being able to explain something to folks about technology and they get past that bit of, I couldn't do this. I don't think I can do this. I, and there's you can, literal fear. And I can understand that because, you know, technology can be a little daunting sometimes. Mm-hmm. But once you understand it, that sense of empowerment that you have is just, I mean, it, it, you can hear the sigh of relief coming off of them. So, yeah. And it, I mean, it makes you feel good knowing that you did something that, like, you definitely helped these people out. Right, right. And, Are and, we talking, like, is this an Alt F4 solution that they're learning now, or is it a little further than that? <laughs> it's a little further than that. Alt F4 is is how you, of course, would close, close most... Uh, Close most programs or even shut down, you know, Microsoft uh, products or Windows or log out. But um, it's a little deeper than that. It's a mm-hmm. little deeper than that. And I take my folks down a rabbit hole every time a little bit deeper because I watch them and they'll hit me up severe. Oh, this, this, this isn't working. That, that, that isn't working. I said, did you try such and such? They'd be like, oh, yeah. or a couple of times before they even get to the point, I try to give them fixes and solutions on how to deal with things before they contact myself or my teammates and and be like, Oh, I've done it. They can go ahead. And once they call them, they'd be like, before you start taking me through these preliminary steps, Sabir told me to do this, that, this, that, this, that. And Sabir has walked me to do this, that, this, Mm -hmm. that. So it might be a deeper problem at this point, something that they're not able to handle. And again, it's it's not a situation of I don't believe in passing the buck. The unofficial one of the in my opinion, in my experience, one of the unofficial rules of IT is find someone else to blame, find another thing to try to push, you know, I guess accountability or responsibility on somebody else. I do not subscribe to that. Right. But if there is something deeper that belongs to another culprit, we're gonna go ahead and identify that to figure out your problem is so you can get along your way. Mm-hmm. So and I think that's I, I really appreciate some of the folks I work with at work who they understand that and they feel that they can trust me that when I'm telling myself and my teammates, they can trust us when we say, look, we're not trying to walk you down the road here. We're not trying to kick a can down the road here. 
this is where we are. We're going to get you to the right people to fix the program. And I think that's always an empower, empowering and an enlightening thing. And I know when Dr. You know, when Jimmy comes through here, he would probably say something like the same, like, yeah, spirit does kind of put us through it, but in a, in a, in a good way. So yeah. it, it is something that opens up eyes. So, so Beer, I would love for you to give me IT homework for oh. me to work on for next week, and then I'd bring it back to you on Wednesday. Oh. Say less, Jermaine. Oh, give her, say give her less. a quiz sheet. That ain't, that ain't no you Every said, week. I need something. Bet. Okay. So we, we've done. So I'm I'm from South Mississippi, and we used to work with the kids in our community a lot, which is something. Actually, in 2024 and 2025, I do want to. One of, unfortunately, one of my one of my former uh, proteges that I was teaching a while ago, he passed, and I did talk to his family and was like, I want to start up a technology, you know, back, you know, start back up a technology program that teaches kids how to get back involved in IT and name it after your brother. And he was like, fine, no problem. Oh, I talked cool. to the older brother. So it was, it, it's, it's important. And we used to do that all the time. What was the name? What? What was what was going to be the name? Or what was, what was well, I hadn't I hadn't thought about it. Okay. I generally have done things. It's just been like I'll name something like basic computing stuff, like okay. kind of like the Alt F four, right. using hot keys, using different things. How to how to put to how to make a, a publishing. I've I've got a whole curriculum. It's dated because it's still it's still on like Microsoft Publisher ninety seven, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, it's dated. But we it, the the information is basically the same. What a remote computer is. How, what is a remote computer? What's the difference between local and remote. Then I took that and springboarded on basic web design mm-hmm. and then was teaching, training kids. Last time I did something, it was a while ago, it was during the Met, when the Metro Center was open. Mm. And I had trained some kids over at the Metro Center uh, and we had we had done a, a class on it. So, I mean, it's, it's really good to have and I think being able to refresh people's folks' knowledge, no matter your age, no matter your background, no matter whether or not it's you know it's a bunch of kids that are like we got this already, or if it's Jermaine trying to go ahead and hit me with a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> either way, either way, I, I open up that opportunity. And what I would say, what I would posit to my to to colleagues of mine in this field, no matter where you are, that also helps amp your own knowledge. And you also have to be able to understand that people come from different levels and calibers of understanding for technology Mm -hmm. you can't just talk to somebody and every now and then i always i always toss my wife in these things every now and then she's a nurse and so she'll start talking about such i'd be like babe what does that mean you know like you can't hit people with specialized knowledge i need you to walk that back understand like talk to talk to somebody about whatever specialized knowledge you have like explaining a peanut butter sandwich to an alien like, like yeah. an alien has no idea what peanut butter is. Why is it food? Why do you put well, it on bread? What is I, it? It's funny <laughs> that you say that about your wife being a nurse. My wife is also a nurse, okay. and I, I never took A&P in high school or nice. anything like that. Okay. So when okay. she's explaining stuff to me, I'm like... <laughs> give me, give me like, give me like twenty seconds to Google this, and then you can, right. then you can go ahead. Right, right. Well, what I would challenge your wife, and what I'm constantly challenging my wife to, is like, before you start saying things like, you know, pulmonary edema, like, like when when you say things, the thing is, it's your body, right? Like the same thing with technology. It's, it's my computer. I use this. If I go ahead and say, well, this computer's having a blue screen of death. What are you talking about? My, com- what is, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Oh, well, it just means your resources. Your computer's got not enough resources to do the thing it needs, and it's exhausted. Okay, well, that makes sense. I can yeah. understand that, right? Not as scary as blue screen of death, right? saying it right. that way. <laughs> yeah, blue screen of death, like, what? Huh? I did what? <laughs> like, oh, well, your network interface card just will not connect. It, it won't connect to your network. Well, what do you mean? So that means that there's something wrong with the thing that lets you get on the network, and you can't connect. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't hit people with specialized knowledge. And when it is specialized knowledge, kind of like Jermaine asking me to hit it with this test, which I've already got something for you. No problem, buddy. <laughs> no, I got you, buddy. I got you. We're going to call it Sabir's Homework no, for the week or you something. Got no problem I'm with it. I'm coming up with the name you right got now. No oh, yeah. problem with it. Got no problem with it. And, and it's important. And and like I said, every week, my coworkers, I, every the first week of the month, they know to expect from me 
they'd be like, all right, Sabir, what's the what's the quiz going to be? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And usually I missed it Monday because I actually had a funeral on Monday. I missed it Monday, but Tuesday I said, this month's quiz is going to be a little different. Some people saw the, they saw the group, me, and they was like, bro, what you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> and then I had like most of other people like, oh, 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 I got it. They're like, Apple for the teacher, like raising right, their hands, right, they're right. excited. And that's good. They understood the questions. They understood the homework. And they also understand that I'm going to get them something nice. So like, <laughs> that's the other thing. Because like for the last things, we'll do things like I think the first month I gave away like a, a key wireless charger that you can use to charge your phone with. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've yeah. also done like uh, 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 a, a certificate for lunch at area areas, at okay. area spots or a gift certificate to such and such place or whatever. Yeah, make so, it fun. Yeah, make it fun. Make it fun and make then, it worthwhile. But what it also, it make it worthwhile. So it's, there is positive reinforcement here. It gets them to be able to chance to study. But what I'm also doing is teaching them how to do something so they don't have to call me or my colleagues. Right. Because you They've understood the process. Yeah. And even they themselves can become my little lieutenants. Be like, oh, you don't remember how to set that printer up? You don't remember what Sabir gave us that as a homework? Look, I got you. Step away. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like that. So, and, and not trying to, again, push off, push the buck. Not again, try because there are other times I'm doing other specialized things at work. And I can't always go in and figure out why your printer's not working. Mm-hmm. I can't always figure out uh, uh, why you can't connect to this virtual system. But if I've walked you through it, you take away these preliminary steps, you've been empowered. So it's been an empowering morning. Yeah. Just make sure you bring that wireless keychain charger. And I've got your question <laughs> answered, sir. <laughs> I got you. Man, well, wait, no problem. Just, just to clear up a little bit, yeah. you, your work is, you know, you're operating – or you're the IT for 100 plus computers that way you're wearing probably uh, something like that. 500. 500 <laughs> plus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like, yeah. It's like just, just me. 500 plus. So yeah, yeah. you got to have some people that, that also know what they're doing and mm-hmm. just that encounter the everyday problems. Oh yeah. Oh, so. yeah. oh yeah. And then understanding that there's all kinds of different ways to get things done and, and really be able to say, look, there's, there's more than one way. Don't don't panic. This, that, and the third. And that's another reason why I give people my cell phone number and use group me. I'm like, I can respond to you that much faster. Mm-hmm. Just go. Let's go ahead and get this done. You'll be okay. Deep breaths. You know, I understand what you're doing is important. I understand your day to day is important. Let's push through this, and everything will be fine. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening to MPB Think Radio and tuning into Everyday Tech this morning. My name is Abram Nanny. I've got Sabir Abdul Haq here with me. Email your questions or comments to everydaytech at mpbonline.org or download the MPB public media app and use the talk to us feature to leave us an audio or video message. So like I said from the beginning, we were going to talk about tech headlines in the news. Yeah. Um, so to start us off, um, I want to say thanks to my fellow MPB Think Radio friends who send me these headlines when they see them. So Liz, Java, everyone else who th- everyone else who's done it, thanks for getting these headlines to Appreciate me. It. So the first one, though, I found myself mm. Um, mm. as and uh, if you know me, uh, if you're close with me, you know, I had to include this story from March of this year, uh, which is the University of Mississippi made a massive investment in, quote, the future and business of esports, end quote. Nice. Their program delivered over ninety thousand dollars in scholarships to new players. Mm. The interesting thing about esports is that you can actually become a professional at fifteen years old. Mm. So, being a fan of professional Rocket League esports myself, I knew one of the players that signed with Ole Miss this year. Mm. He goes by the in-game name of Wanda Mike. Okay. Um, so I I known him before he signed with Ole Miss. So nice. it's kind of like like a like high school scouting program. I yeah, thought that yeah, was yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's common theory in the esports community that the secret to continue the growth of the industry is to ensure the growth of the collegiate scene. So Ole Miss taking the right steps there. Understood. Question. What's up? What is esports? If e-sports. I've never heard of esports, esports is where you compete at a video game mm-hmm. um, in like a tournament style setting or in league mm-hmm. style settings. You know, a lot of them, I think a lot of them are still mostly league play. Yeah. I watch Rocket League, which is tournament style. I love Rocket League. I, I'm a big fan of oh Rocket my League. God. Yeah, I, I, I play too much Rocket League and <laughs> uh, I could spend my time doing so much better stuff. Um, but yeah, so actually next week I'm going to be going to the MHSAA esports state championship next what? tuesday so yeah that's good stuff yeah yeah so i'll be doing that and we'll we'll talk about it on everyday tech that'll be mm. that'll be everyday tech next wednesday is us is gotcha. me kind of recapping the whole 
shebang of, gotcha. of the whole event of the state championships. So shout out to MHSAA for getting that going on, going on because that's like it's growing, but it's mm-hmm. still budding. Like it's still in its infancy as a program. So technology, what I hear you saying, because again, like esports, I, I, I'm a you know, I'm, I'm a hopeless addict of the last of us factions. Mm-hmm. That's all I play. I think we talked about this before, but I mean, the <laughs> fact that esports is this talks of, this is again, technology is what we're talking about. This is technology in athletics and mm-hmm. like, like, you know, in, in, and, and so tell me, I'm, well, I'm, I, I hate to swap the roles. Oh, no, time, you're good. Tell me what some of the athletes, some of the esports athletes have been, you know, in terms of looking at video game, Athletes, basically, these are video game athletes. Oh yeah, yeah. What, what's going through folks' minds is as you and other folks are there and, and helping to to officiate some of these. What is what's going through their well, minds? Well, here's the thing about like esports is like you know, no one, no one when we were growing up wanted uh wanted their kid to be sitting inside playing a video <laughs> game all day. No. Um. So I think that's like the main obstacle that right. that these athletes or activity players you know Mm -hmm. the the video game players that they face is probably Mm -hmm. encouragement from parents and grandparents to keep going forward with it because like i mean like it's a it's a big industry that's growing growing a lot um as far as what's going through their minds Mm -hmm. so much information (laughs) so much information at once because you think about like think about a quarterback on the field yeah you know you're sitting you're looking at the defense. You're saying this guy's lined up over here, right. so I need to call an audible, mm-hmm. and you know I need to put a guy in front of him so he's not right. coming to get me, and right. I need to hand it off at the right time. Or maybe right. some guy's cheating around the corner, right. Right. and I need right. to go around him and Correct. fake the handoff. Right. So all that's going through the quarterback's mind. Interesting. And so you're seeing <clears throat> you're seeing these uh, esports athletes that are also have that much information because one of the one of the Esports that's going on next week at mm-hmm. the state championships is Madden NFL. Oh, uh, the video. Okay, so Madden the football game. Madden, Madden the football Madden, game. Gotcha. Cool. cool, cool. Um, so the football video game. So mm-hmm. they're they're taking in all that information as the quarterback. Yeah. Uh, playing as the quarterback, and they're also playing as the wide receiver and nice. playing as the offensive line. Of course. Um, so that that it is a wild amount of information that people are taking in at the same time. And and it's funny what you said that about basically we're talking about video game athletes. Mm-hmm. One of my favorites from back in the day, his name, his 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 handle is Nick A30. And yeah, Nick A30 yeah. has, has shared he has shared his and right now Nick A30 might be 24, 25 now. He's mm-hmm. in his, you know, uh, early to mid 20s. And he made a deal with his folks. Now, now Nick A30 is a brilliant, not uh, video, a video publisher. He's done amazing, well thought out videos and made goo gobs of money. Mm-hmm. And like goo gobs is again a technical term. <laughs> yeah, 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 go, yeah, goo gobs of money, buku money on. Yeah, we hear that YouTube. all the time on right, everyday tech. Right, right. On uh, uh, making money through YouTube and other advertisements. But what he did was his folks wanted him to go to school for his video publishing. He made a deal with his folks. And this is one of Nick Eight Thirty is probably one of the most established and respected uh video game athletes and content mm-hmm. producers. He made a deal with his parents. He said, Look, give me six to eight months. If I can make my own money from this, let me do this. They wanted him to go to college. Now again, any young folks out there, still go to school, or whatever. Do what you yeah, do, whatever. Yeah. We're not telling you don't go to school. But he made a deal with his folks and he said, If I can do this, let this be my career. I just he felt that school wasn't for him. And he went through and he is to now making He's one of the top content producers for Fortnite still. Yeah, and, and, and the thing and, is, he probably made more money mm-hmm. in that time. Like, in the four years that he would have been in school, he probably oh, yeah. made more money than he would have paid going to school. Continues to. Like yeah. Nick, and then, again, it's not just so he's becoming. So it's interesting that you're saying this is happening to Ole Miss. You're saying that? that, that yeah, that's, that's yeah. Going? Ole Miss uh, signed several, uh, e- several students. Esports athletes. That changes the game. When you think about things like, oh, this this person isn't running a forty, like like it doesn't have an impressive uh, uh, speed skill in the forty, running the forty or mm-hmm. this down the third. This is an esports athlete. 
something that you know folks like you and I probably got if we're being nerdy or whatever growing yeah. up we probably got bullied about or fussed at our <laughs> folks about yeah. yeah you're gonna ruin your eyes get off that TV stop playing the game but yep. these folks that's amazing that technology has changed the game even when it comes to extracurricular extracurricular you know activities mm-hmm. you know going into school and then uh, post high school that's amazing yeah it is uh, it is real it and you know the MHSAA used to stand mm-hmm. Mississippi High School Athletics Association. Correct. It's Activities Association ah, now. Ah, okay. Um, because it, they changed it to include the e-sports, e-sports nice. activities. Nice, um, nice. And so, and, and that's good. Good on them for forward thinking to be yeah. able to say like, look, we're going to make this a little more, you know, adept, and we're going to include more re- well-rounded to include these activities that may not always have to do with actual athletic, like traditional athletics. Yeah, mm-hmm. So that that's that's awesome. That's really yeah. awesome. So if if you're a parent or grandparent out there listening, right. wondering why uh, your student wants to be involved in this, give give them a chance at yeah. least. Yeah, give them give them a chance. Yeah, like at least let them do it. And yeah, of course, do things in moderation. Keep those grades right, up. Right. Everything else, but yeah, I mean, I think that's that's something that uh, a lot of kids. I've got nieces. I've got nephews. I've got you know, friends, kids and everything else that are saying that they want to grow up and be a, a, a YouTube streamer. Mm-hmm. We didn't think about that. Yeah. We didn't think. Yeah. About, I, I know I didn't. I'm 43 years old. We weren't thinking about that. Not at that time. Yeah. We, I mean, we were. Yeah. I mean, we, the constant saying was that, like, you'll never make money playing video games. Right. And that's that's the yeah. thing that happens now. Like, mm-hmm. it's just the way the world developed. And it's, yeah. you know, you can argue against it. You can argue for it. Mm-hmm. But like, it's it's the way the world developed is right. that people are making money playing video games. It's now. A whole in the words in the words of Ariel is. A whole new world. So, I mean, oh, not Ariel, excuse me, a ja- uh, Aladdin and Jasmine. Yeah, a whole new yeah, world. So that, that's amazing. That is amazing. I, I think that, and, and I'm glad that they're, they're they've got you coming on board to be able to help officiate and uh, do what you do. So. I, I'm there to. Uh, I'm just gonna observe. Mm-hmm. I'm watching gotcha. it. Um, I would love to be a part of it if, mm-hmm. it's if, Rocket they, League. if they want. Yeah, it's Rocket League. It's, right? it's, it's Rocket it's, League. It's Madden and Super yeah. Smash Brothers oh my next gosh. week. I love Rocket League. Yeah, that's um, one of the few games me and my son actually will like actually go on and play for. Really, oh, yeah. that's cool. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tune in next week. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be. Uh, recording a bunch of stuff there, and hopefully cool. I'll get to interview with like coaches and maybe even some players and nice, stuff. Nice, um, nice. See, so we'll get so we'll get their opinion on what's going through their minds. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Mississippi doing the thing. That's what's yeah, up. Yeah, real awesome. cool, real cool, cool to me. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, the next, uh, so we kind of spent a while on that yeah, one, yeah, but yeah. the next headline uh, for the one I saw, uh, this one was from Liz Gill. Okay. Mississippi ranks, ranks second for top sp- states to pursue a career in gaming development in, according to Google Keyword Planner, which analyzed data from CSGO Luck. Mm-hmm. And the reason that it's ranked second um, is uh, salaries adjusted to consumer spending. Mm-hmm. That's that's the way they calculate it as best. Gotcha. Um, so the average game developer makes 131158 which is $158, which is 20% higher than the national average. Only bested by Idaho, which makes one hundred thirty-five thousand five hundred fifty-nine dollars. Interesting. So, despite these numbers, though, Mississippi ranks twenty-fourth in states most likely to pursue such a career. Hmm. And Liz, when she sent me this article, she just asked why, with question marks and exclamation points mm-hmm. and all through it. Mm-hmm. So, you think she was asking why second place or why twenty-fourth place? I think she. I think it's a combination of both. Why? Why are we have so few interests in it? While still having the second best place, while still being the second best place to pursue a career for it, you know, I could see the second place for sure because of the fact that the need is probably so high mm-hmm. in the state, and especially when you think about Idaho being kind of right along the line with us. Yeah, I would think it's because of need, um, and that's the reason why we're shopping so heavily and and giving so much as a salary here for that position is because the need is so high. Right. Yeah, it could be. And it's also cost of living adjusted. Correct. Right. Um, So, I mean, everyone kind of is aware that Mississippi's not the... We're, we're not the highest in cost of living. Right. Um, so, uh, and I wonder how much of these video game jobs are remote. Mm. And, and yeah, from so, different areas. And yeah. From, mm. yeah, so remote from, you know, companies based in California, mm. normally paying California salaries mm-hmm. for someone that lives in Mississippi, right. paying Mississippi grocery consumer right. spending. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, California is what kind of one of the tech capitals of the United mm-hmm. States, probably. 
where we're the agricultural capital. Right. 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 And so when you're talking about the 24th place <laughs> mm-hmm. and the reason why nobody is pursuing it is because our top our top business here is agriculture and that's hands on so everybody is kind of thinking about whether or not they're going to do a hands on job i guess versus a virtual mm-hmm. tech job basically mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah and then and then that's also has to deal with availability and opportunity because once upon a time if you were to take back mississippi to 20 years ago 40 years ago thinking about high speed access and internet and things mm-hmm. like that which are one of the things you're going to need to do when it comes to game design mm-hmm. or anything like really heavily technical it's going to require a faster speed now you've got situations where 5G speed is just about everywhere mm-hmm. in, in Mississippi you've got I, got I think we were talking about on a previous po- on a previous uh, uh, episode where like my hometown barely had AOL where I'm from right growing up so the and real question that I have for you Sabir is when you were coming up what made you want to go into tech versus a hands-on career oh let's learn about Sabir so hey so that that brings up a very good question because my dad always asked me that same question he'd be like why didn't you just go for computer design so I like to talk Thank you for coming on the radio, Samir. <laughs> I like what you about to say, Jermaine. I was about to say your dad was almost still. He wanted you to do what? Right, now? computers, computer, like actually computer science. Am I actually? I went to school. I went to school at Southern Miss for a track in technical writing. Okay, technical writing is the art of explanation, Got basically. It. So, like, for me to be able to go ahead and take this big, huge Google bit of information again, it's like we're Google. Right. Like uh, I, I know how to spell Google it. bit. There you go. Yeah, Google <laughs> bit. Of information <laughs> and condense it to something that's actually palatable and understandable. Um, and I, that was my field. And then I had an opportunity when I graduated from Southern Miss, I had $300 to my name. I can go pay what I owed USM and then go to Antonelli for graphic design. I could pay my first month rent and work with a nonprofit in Jackson or pay for a $300 flight for a job that was looking for me in Minnesota. And I chose the nonprofit in Jackson Mm -hmm. and just had to pay USM later. But (laughs) but, uh, but, uh, are they still looking for their money? No, they they, they got their money. They got their money a long time. Give give me my transcripts. (laughs) Nah, shoot. I went right up there to Kennard Washington Hall at at, at Southern Miss. I'm like, here you go. Uh, But nah, um, that was where it was. And so I, for me to answer that question, what brought me in the technical what in the technical field was there's a lot of folks in my field that can't communicate what they know. Okay. And it's 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 they, right. they'll know it soundly. They can, you know, break it down to stand and they will talk the tech jargon to other tech folks anyway. But when it comes to speaking to a consumer or what is called an end user, because the main thing, especially where I work, my main job is folks already have highly specialized knowledge. There is a bit of Jimmy won't kill me if I say this, but I'm like, like it's not so much like a, it's like I've I've understood all this different things. How would you? How can you not explain? Because he's never been that kind of person, but other people have mm-hmm. been like, I know all these different things. How can you not explain to me? You know why my computer's not doing X, Y, and Z? And and there's again that xenophobia. There's that, that sense of, I don't understand this. Mm-hmm. Sometimes all you need is someone to say it's going to be okay, mm-hmm. explain to you concisely what the problem is and how we're going to fix it, and you'll keep going. So you basically coupled what you were learning and then put it with the IT spin on it, basically, Fantastic. and, and used that as your profession. That's exactly it. Were you your only friend in your friend's circle <laughs> who wanted to go into IT? No. Nah, one of my best friends actually is in Slidell. He used to work for a very well-known IT firm in, Miss- in Hattiesburg Okay, uh, that actually has touched all over the uh, Pine Belt. But, uh, I mean, he basically, I was talking to him, this a couple of days ago, he's actually in Dominican Republic and chilling. Right, he's he's over in the DR right now. That's chilling. what happens when you get so, an IT. Yeah, that's uh, he he's over there chilling <laughs> right now. So he is. That's one of my best friends. But he lives in Slidell doing network stuff, and he's worked for a very well known. If I said their name, he's worked for a very well known te- telecommunications okay. firm, and he's worked for a couple other spots. He's I mean, it's amazing. So he and I were like the nerds, but we had a really small school. But yeah. he and I were like he and I were like the nerds. He would take we would take a park computers when we were like 11 and yeah. y'all, but y'all didn't feel out of place just because y'all were the only ones who were touching computers no 
Yeah, no. y'all were really, each other's support we system. Were really, y'all were each other's support system. When I say system. small, we, I mean really, really yeah. small school. Yeah. And so, but it was even when we came, we both went to Southern Miss, and we were both doing some of our same same things there. So it was just a matter of. I would say, you know, for folks that want to do, you know, for young folks, one of my nephew, I just saw him actually at the funeral on on uh, on Monday and I was encouraging him. I was like, look, you continue to do what you're doing. You do your great work. That he He's kind of tech proficient because his dad is kind of tech proficient. Mm-hmm. And he actually his dad, one of my other best friends, he uh, he works for the military. He works for the military doing I.T. So, he, you know, they, they constantly are, you know, bouncing ideas off each other and everything else. And so I was like, look, you just do whatever you do. And, and kind of like how in, in, in Spider-Man and Spider-Verse, his uncle Aaron was telling him, you, you keep going. Just, you know, you find someone, find your group of people, young people, find your find your group and keep going. You know, don't let don't be discouraged, even if it's your parents, like even if it's your parents in certain situations, you know, be respectful. But in certain situations here, we got esports coming to Tupelo. Who would have thought that we would have had esports in Tupelo, Mississippi? Right. That, too. And then, look, I don't want to put an age limit mm-hmm. on this because IT is age limit less. Mm-hmm. Right. You can pick this up later. Right. You don't even mm-hmm. have to be a young person. If you can understand it, mm-hmm. you can do it. Right. And I was actually trying to text a good friend of mine. She hadn't answered yet. But when we were talking about game design, she's a game designer out of Vicksburg. And she, oh, she, lives, she lives cool. in Vicksburg, and she teaches game design for a certain very well-known community college. That's cool. And she is amazing at it. And she's done particularly everything. And I, I was like, I, was, I tried to reach her the other day, and I, I just texted her while y'all were talking. I was like, hey, you're in the phone. But, uh, but uh, she had Nancy yet. She, she, she gets very busy. But, uh, yeah, she is, she is very good at what she does in terms of game design. Yeah. And... I would say that the opportunity, we, that's one thing that we talk about on the show, I think, a lot, is opportunity. The opportunities are out there through organ, through companies like Twitch, YouTube, all these other different things saying, hey, we want these folks to build this community. And, yeah, they get paid for it, you know, cause especially because Twitch is now owned by Amazon. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they're getting paid for it. But at the same time, encouraging these bright minds to do bright things and innovative things, even in Mississippi, which – Sometimes people are looking at us as we're the bottom of the barrel and everything good and the top of the barrel, everything bad. But that's great that we've got where people are paying attention to us for esports, athletics. I mean, that, that means that, that there, there are people that are going to be doing scholarships for these kids. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, to go for higher education in gaming. That is amazing. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's very encouraging for something for, you know, and, and yeah, it's non-traditional. But, you know, but we always as adults, I've got three boys as adults. We always want to be able to make sure that, look, support your children in whatever it is that they're doing. Yeah. I, my my four year school that I went to, um, it was actually an accelerated program anyways. <laughs> um, but I went to for music production right. and they, were, they offered like game design mm. places there mm. or degrees there. They had uh, game music that, they, that was offered. It's, you nice. know, there's all these creative places yeah. that that are available now for these students. Hmm. We're glad you found our show, Everyday Tech, on MPB Think Radio. This is Abram Nanny here with Sabir Abdul-Haq, who's ready to answer your questions. Email us at everydaytech at mpbonline.org. Now, as I mentioned earlier, our next story was sent to me by the man Java Chapman, so shout out to him. The U.S. Army Engineer Research and Development Center the ERDC in Vicksburg, Mississippi, is unveiling the new HPE EX 4000 next mm. Tuesday, December 12th. And the HPE EX 4000 is a supercomputer with over 270,000 computing cores. Oh my God. It will be named Carpenter after Medal of Honor recipient and native Mississippian retired Marine Corporal Kyle Carpenter. Carpenter nice. is the youngest living Medal of Honor recipient. That is amazing. Yeah. That so is- that's. That's 270,000 computing cores. That is, I don't, what can you do with a computer that big? Like, or what can you not do? Like, like that's insane. Run the earth. Like if, if, the, <laughs> if, the, earth, if the earth was a computer. No, I mean, that's you a Send lot. it down to the core so, and operate it. So let's put it this way. Remember we were talking about, we were talking about my Bentley computer, uh, yeah. Jermaine and everything else and the Batman computer. Yeah. <laughs> That thing has you said how many cores? Two hundred over two hundred seventy thousand. Like this that thing. Is, this is the universe computer. This not the. I, 
This is this thing. Stunned. Might, this he thing said, might be able to run the Death Star, like, it, it, like in terms of Star Wars. It could spin a black hole the other way. It, the other way. Yeah. yeah. This might run the the like if you were to look at the computer of the Starship Enterprise, it might say that have two hundred and seventy. Yeah. 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 Wow, that is amazing, and it's here now. now that I didn't know, but yeah. it doesn't surprise me because I've done like contract work for the Army Corps engineer out of Vicksburg. And they've got a lot of really tech stuff up in there, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if it's over there, Erdick or anything over there off of Halls Ferry Road. Mm, I know. I wonder if you know my aunt. We're going to have to talk after okay, this. We can, we can, <laughs> she works we can. for the Army Corps of Engineers. Yes, indeed. Look, if anybody's doing it, it's probably the uh, Army Corps of Engineers. It's probably yeah. the Army Corps of Engineers. And that's, that's, that's amazing that we've got it in Mississippi or probably on the coast, you know, for something dealing with something oceanic with, you know, all the, all the marine, you know, the maritime information and Right. They got. It wouldn't surprise me either way, but that's amazing that we've got that. A lot of times people don't realize there are so along. So we got the Mississippi River that's on that, that borders the western part of our state. There's a lot of things that go from Louisiana all the way up to Arkansas in terms of making what they call hops to, to make different parts and get across, you know, across the entire Internet and the whole network right, superstructure, right. all that across the entire United States and then the world. But a lot of those hops are along either the eastern or western side of uh, the Mississippi River. It's amazing. So it wouldn't surprise me, especially Meadville is where uh, 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 what C Spire is, is based out of Meadville, right? Okay. So there's a lot of technology that's just in that area, which is over there by Natchez and everything. That's that's there's a lot of technology and information that's happening all up around the you know coming up the uh, the uh, coming up the Mississippi River border. That's that's amazing. And then there's so many different things, everything from gaming. Our, um, um, you've got different, you know, state agencies that are all with the uh, that are all with the ITS. Um, they're all under the data spine of Mississippi's central uh, data spine here in Jackson. I mean, that's mm-hmm. amazing. So if th- for them to have a data core that, or, you know, for them to have a computer that's that big, a military computer, that doesn't surprise me. And at some point, what we see as science fiction as something that can run the enterprise and something that can run right. the, uh, the something that can run the enterprise is probably, you know, years and years and years from now, probably going to be on a Walmart shelf. The term oh, yeah. science fiction, I don't even think exists anymore. Exactly. Uh, Sci- that's a great point. Do they even have the genre of movies anymore? <laughs> well, I think what do we, they look like? I right. think back in the 80s, they were just directing it at the wrong, you know, the wrong yeah. stuff. Like, yeah. They call it fantasy. If, you know, yeah. Like, well, yeah. I mean, it's like. You know, they thought we were going to have flying cars. For some reason, that was what they always went to was mm. flying cars. Well, they, they're doing it. They're, yeah, <laughs> they're they'll, the they'll figure it out Why eventually, not? I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, Remember? Yeah. And then, I mean, the flying skateboard was the first thing. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah that's I mean, true. It's, it's amazing the way how all that is just kind of piecing itself together. What were you, yeah. were you, were you saying? Oh, just that. I mean, like, Back to the Future 2. Yeah. I mean, they, they, oh, yeah. they're the talking flying. about, like, he goes up to it, the, the video game and they're like, mm. oh, you use your hands for right. it. <laughs> And I, I mean, I, I mean we're back close then, to that. I right mean, now. just basically, they were dreaming that up then. Right, yeah, right, right. right. Let me tell you something else, and this is so my, maybe on topic, off topic, mm-hmm. but you would know more about this, Sabir. Zap mm-hmm. and Roger's um, computer love song. That yes. song came out in like 1980, right, 1981, right, 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 right. and he was talking about seeing somebody on his computer, computer. screen, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and this was 1980, mm-hmm. 81. Yeah. <laughs> That's, so, now I got that beat in my mind. I mean, like, this <laughs> computer that screens, that's <laughs> an average I've, uh, average phone today will have the ability to look at oh, you, yeah. your friends from your phone. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's amazing. And, and, like, science fiction becomes science fact or science reality. And, mm-hmm. I, and, I, and yeah, you, you, thank you, Jermaine. I have that. He that said, could it be your face I love. see on my computer mm-hmm. screen? This song dropped in 1980. Yes. This, this is, that's classic. <laughs> the only thing they saw on a computer screen was on a big one in the back somewhere, and it was some green or some black and white text. I'm mm-hmm. not going to get that beat out of my head all day. <laughs> day. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Samir. No, nah, you're good. You're good. You're good. Science fiction sh- turns sh- to science. Mm-hmm. I swear, we've had so many things. Things, yeah. Uh, said today that uh, that'll go on a cat poster right. at some point. Right. <laughs> some inspirational music behind it on the podcast or something. But I think again, this again speaks again to opportunity. Technology is always going to speak to opportunity. It's going to speak to what is available. And like I said, the the, the military supercomputer that's military now. 
you know, it might be years and years and years from now that all of a sudden that, that computer is going to be on a store shelf, mm. you know, for a yeah. Black Friday, you know, a Black Friday shelf or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's it's crazy. Be, it's going to be, uh, it's because it, I, I think about how, like even I, I was watching the original Mission Impossible and they were talking about, they were talking about cutting edge stuff, whatever, this, that, and the third. That stuff is so dated right now. It's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. Crazy. Oh, um, <laughs> one other. Now, we we've hit a topic on the head. They're they're calling. Yeah, yeah, everybody's yeah, ready yeah, now. Yeah, everybody's they're ready. Uh, one thing I just want to read through real quick. Uh, on November 29th, our friends at Mississippi Edition, which airs weekdays from 8:30 to 9 a.m., mm-hmm. did a report on some Mississippi legislators' move to legalize online sports betting in Mississippi mm-hmm. in 2024. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to stick too long on this subject because. Uh, December 5th yesterday in legal terms discussed it as well and as it stands Mississippians can only bet online while inside of certain associated casinos and while I don't have much to say about it I will say it's good to see Mississippi lawmakers looking at the online sphere uh, mm-hmm. because the internet is still wild lands right, you right, know? right so if you want to check out those full episodes that's November 29th installment of Mississippi edition excellent and the December 5th installment of in legal terms but like Jermaine said, we've got calls. Uh, let's go to Kathleen in Osaka, who's got a question about their fo- her phone. What's going on, Kathleen? Oh, guys, I am so glad you're there. Oh, goodness. Um, I live by the Mississippi-Louisiana state line, and I appreciate all the high-tech stuff and videos mm. and holograms and all that stuff you all got. Mm. But... I'm old school originally, Mm -hmm. and uh, we have a hard time getting phone service, period. Mm. To talk to you all today, I had to walk down the bedroom, down the stairs, through the kitchen, out the back door, to the middle of my yard, and walk to the front of the house. Mm. Oh, goodness. Now, that sounds logical if you get a signal, but I have health issues, and I am very, very concerned as to how to get a phone. And I'm going to say in alphabetical order, AT&T, Ceasefire, and Verizon all have the same problems. And they're suggesting a 2000 to $3,000 fix for me to buy a pole, antenna, a router, and a booster. Hmm. And I said, well, can you buy it? Let me pay you on time. <laughs> right. so, us, us old folks ain't, ain't gone, aren't out there making $100,000 a year. Yeah. So, uh, any suggestions other than selling out, moving to a city, which I don't think I can go back to. Yeah, I got you. But um, what do we do? Uh, I would just say, like, there's there's a few things if you were to look online for signal boosters that are nowhere near that cost. Like, that's that's pretty doggone high. Um, like, yeah. just for you to be able to, to do something. And I know Psyca can be kind of... I've been through your area before. I've, I've, uh, what the Leonard Skinner monument is out that way. What'd you say? Did you blink? Oh yeah, of did course. You, of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm very there's familiar. A whole, I'm, there's, I'm, a whole, there's a whole 800 people out here. Yes, indeed. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but I would say like there's, there are things and I would, I would recommend looking online, Googling online. I know we've got low time today, but, um, Googling or looking online to be able to find signal boosters that are nowhere near that cost. Yeah. Like you a might, fraction of that might cost. need to go to uh, your local library if yeah. you need to get some reception there. Yeah. Um, if you're, if you're capable of that, um, make sure, uh, if you can send us an email and we'll try to get some more direct details, details about it. Yeah. Well, as soon as I figure out whether I've got an email, I'll be glad to. Okay. (laughs) Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Kathleen. I'm back to old school. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you, Kathleen. All right. Well, let's stay on the phone lines. We've got just a couple minutes left. Chico in Oxford. What's going on? Hey, y'all. I heard, I think it was Sabir earlier that said 5G is almost everywhere in Mississippi now. D- just about. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yesterday I was uh, hanging out at the Apple store up in Germantown, Tennessee. Okay. And, and you know, Germantown is sort of like the, the Madison mm-hmm. uh, that area of Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it has an Apple store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was, I was in there, and I, was, I was doing good to have like one or two bars on my iPhone, hmm. and I commented to the technician, I was like, where I live in the rural, very rural, you can see the stars at night area of Mississippi. Hmm. I have five G, 
you know, I could watch the Tonight Show with no buffering. Hmm. And the technician said, oh, we don't have 5G in Birmingham. That's, sure wish that's interesting. Did. That is wild. Yeah. And, and, it, and Even in the Apple store. In the Apple store, they have no 5G. That is, I, I, I couldn't tell. I couldn't, I couldn't. Wow. Like, the only thing I can say is, I mean, I'm sure they'll figure out ways to be able to boost things there and, and, and I'm, you know, where Germantown is, but that's, that's, that's wild. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm from, I'm from Little River, little, a little community called Little River, Mississippi, just a part of Sumrall, Mississippi. I've got 5G. We got, it, it's, yeah. It, I, I really don't know, and hopefully they're able to go ahead. They may be. They, it might have been down. Maybe they've got some things to update. Hopefully it improves. But I hate that you went through that, Chico. Yeah. So you're saying that in 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 Little River they don't have any problem listening to the Little Little River band. <laughs> well, look. All I know is I can hear if when I'm at when I'm back at my folks' house back in South Mississippi, I can stream things with no problems, even when not on Wi-Fi. We got Wi-Fi in our area, so yeah. Yeah, All right, so, yeah, I sure appreciate it. All right, bro. Keep up the good work. Take it Thank easy. you, sir, Chico. Have a good one. Yeah, I mean, that's wild that, uh, that in, Germantown. in Germantown, of all wow. places. And, you know, like one of the headlines that I was going to talk about mm-hmm. um, that we're not going to be able to fully cover today, but yeah, gotcha. Mississippi is actually uh, placed third in the nation with 74% having access to broadband coverage. Right. So yep. uh, as of all 50 states, Mississippi is the third best, has the third best coverage of broadband coverage. I believe it. I completely yeah. believe it. And uh, believe it. there have been there because of some of the things that have been happening recently. So that's, yeah. that's amazing. That's Lots good. of initiative to take yep. that over. And, yep. um, you know, when when cooperatives make that push, then all the other big companies, you know, have to have to try to keep up with that. So Correct. that's that's why. Um, and like I said last week, if you're. Looking at signals, uh, go to sig- or looking at whether your area has a signal. Go to right. signalchecker.com, dot com, mm-hmm. um, and that'll that'll tell you where what signal you have where. Yeah, makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's that's gonna wrap us up for that. Thank you, Sabir. Hey, glad uh, to you, be here. Thank you. you know, we you. had a, you, like Jermaine. I said, we're gonna have a have a very inspirational podcast after this. <laughs> yes, um, it's gonna gonna be. Uh, one to remember, I guess. Uh, so thanks for helping myself and our callers out. If you missed any of the show, make sure you listen back to it on your favorite podcasting app or download the MPB Public Media app. Everyday Tech is brought to you by Mississippi Public Broadcasting, Think Radio, and generous contributions from listeners. Our show today was engineered by Jermaine Flood. Call screeners were Charles Arnold and Will Pickering. I've been your host, Abram Nanny, also the podcast producer. Thank you for tuning in. Up next is Dr. Jimmy with the original Southern Remedy. We'll be back next Wednesday morning with the Mississippi High School Esports State Championship yes. recap. Um, so tune in for that next Wednesday morning at 10 right here on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.